You might have come across one-on-one -on -one convolution while reading deep learning architecture paper. You might be wondering why they exist and what exactly is a one-on-one -on -one convolution doing? That's what we'll be reviewing in today's deep learning tutorial. The one-on-one -on -one convolution operation can be found in various networks, like the Inception or GoogleNet family of networks that started out with the paper going deeper with convolutions. In that network, one-on-one -on -one convolution were present inside the Inception modules, before and after layers of various kernel size. These one-on-one -on -one convolution were used in the subsequent Inception version 2 and 3 in the paper Rethinking the Inception Architecture for Computer Vision. Once again, before and after various other operations. As the number of layers grows in various architecture, it seems that this one-on-one -on -one convolution plays a central role. Like in the original ResNet architecture from the paper Deep Residual Learning for Image Recognition. In that architecture, two types of residual block were used. A basic block, as shown on the left, and a bottleneck block as shown on the right. The bottleneck block have two one by one convolution that were always used as soon as the network was larger than 50 layers. We'll use that bottleneck block at the end to summarize how one on one convolution are being used. Finally, this type of one on one convolution appeared even in a smaller network with a different name, cross channel parametric pooling. This uses was in the network in network paper, which featured a mini network in between convolution operation. This paper was the inspiration for many of the architectures in the later years, like Inception. And the terminology cross-channel parametric pooling is pretty important to keep in mind for understanding what one-on-one -on -one convolutions are. Talking about convolution, a convolution operation is a straightforward mathematical operation. Given a learnable filter called kernel of a specific size, the convolution moves its kernel across the input. During this motion, it calculates the dot product with its weighted filters to create the output, all the while introducing a nonlinearity after the dot product operations, which in most instances is a really based nonlinearity. Many of these convolution layers can then be stacked with different kernel size and strides. For instance, here we have the layers of the first inception neural network called GoogleNet or Inception V1. As a side note, I've made a full breakdown of the architecture, you can check it out here. As you can see, on the first two dimensions of every layer, an important design pattern of a convolutional network is emerging. As the inputs move down the network, their width and height decrease. Culminating in the last layer where the width and height of the inputs are unit vectors. However, as you see in the last dimension, which is the number of filters, the dimension goes up as the layers get deeper. This creates a high dimensionality problem that makes these networks fairly difficult to train. To solve this dimensionality problem, one solution will be to not increase the number of filters or simply drop them. However, that will defeat the whole purpose of having a network with high capacity, since its goal is to have a powerful representation of learnable features. In the early layers, the features are simple and resemble the type of features seen in the early layers of an organic visual cortex, namely edge detection and other building block features. In the later layers, however, the net network makes a combination of previous features to respond to a very specific type of stimuli. For instance, like in area IT of the primate brain, you can get layers that react to specific type of faces. Therefore, the number of filters that has to go up in order to combine lower level features together to make more complex ones. Another way to reduce the dimensionality will be to use a convolution operation with a stride of more than one, so as to reduce the output size. This is usually used in the first convolution layers close to the input and reduce the width and height of the output. And when the layer is a bit deeper in position, it's better to do a pooling operation as it introduces shift and variance capability in the network, meaning that even if the inputs move slightly, it won't affect the activation of that layer. As we can see in this Google Net architecture, pooling layers cut the width and height of the input in half and help reduce dimensionality. So far though, all solutions help fix the first two dimension, width and height, not the feature filter dimension. This is where the one-on-one -on -one convolution comes into play. Its goal is to reduce the number of feature filter to keep its dimension in check. It does that dimensional reduction without dropping useful information, but instead summarize them. So this one-on-one -on -one convolution operation has many names and it all isn't always obvious that we're talking about the one-on-one -on -one convolution. In some paper, it's called a feature map pooling layer. This makes sense because it behaves as a pooling layer on the feature map domain. In other papers, it's called cross-channel parametric pooling, which makes sense since it's a pooling operation acting across channels and has learnable weights. Other name includes even linear weighting or a projection with non-linearity. 
All of these names ring true for what the one-on-one -on -one convolution is actually doing. As you can see in this image, you have a one by one by 192 convolution filter that will move through the 64 by 64 area and summarize the whole volume into a 64 by 64 by one filter. The whole volume is being collapsed into one dimension using the standard dot product operation. This operation is then followed by a nonlinearity like a ReLU. If you pay very close attention to what is happening, you might realize that it starts to look terribly similar to something else we know very well. A single fully connected neuron is being slid over the 64 by 64 grid with, in this particular case, a set of 192 learnable weights. If this is the case, then you can modulate the number of filters that you get out by simply adding more of these neurons. So if you want to go from feature filter size of 192 to 3, you will just add 3 neurons in this layer. With the one-on-one -on -one convolution filter, the number of these filter or neuron is equal to the number of filter output at the end. Each of these filters has its own set of weight, so they learn different projection operations. Summarizing this whole thing, if you had a volume of width w and a height h with a number of channel ch, you can create n one by one by ch filter that will output n h by w by one filter that will then be concatenated together. This understanding of one-on-one -on -one convolution makes the bottleneck block for ResNet even more understandable because it does the following. It reduced the number of filter from 256 to 64 before the computationally more intensive 3 by 3 operation. It then does the 3 by 3 convolution operation. And then it used the 256 one by one projection filters to augment back the number of filter to do the residual addition at the end because the, the number of filter need to match. Pooling and one-on-one -on -one convolution therefore differ in many areas and are both complementary in, in three main ways. The pooling reduces the width and height but keep the same number of filter. While one-on-one -on -one convolution reduces the number of filter, but keep the width and height constant. A pooling operation has low computation because it's constant. Comparatively, a one-on-one -on -one convolution has a higher computation than a and pooling layer because it has learnable weight that need to be trained. The pooling operation isn't learnable. You need to put your bias of the architecture design to set its main parameters. While the one-on-one -on -one convolution is learnable by gradient descent as it has own set of weight. So to summarize, one-on-one -on -one convolution is a very useful layer to know in order to modulate the dimensionality of the feature filter dimension with the added benefit of adding a non-linearity. I hope this was useful. Don't hesitate to let me know in the comment if you have any question and have a great week, everyone.